Okay, so these are trailer uh, wheel hubs and they come with stub axles. And we're gonna start using these on builds because they're super affordable. I think two of these, it comes with a set with the stub bolt. 60 bone skis. I've already knocked out two of the studs. And then I took a Miata rear rotor. A Miata rear rotor is not vented, so it's only like 3 8 thick. Um, and I machined the center out. I actually, my friend did it because I didn't think my my lathe would clear it, but it actually would have. But any hoosies. So I just bored out the center. So what we're going to do is this is the back side of the hub, and we're going to make it where the studs hold the rotor to the hub. So we got to knock these studs out real quick. Which you just take a snicket, and then we can just slide the rotor on. We can take the rotor. I'm hoping all this clears. Your boy technically don't know. What am I doing? So I probably need to get the extended lugs that have the longer, longer, longer knurls on them. But I don't know yet. Okay, so it has some space to pull it. So we can put these on backwards and drive them on with an impact. <laughs> can the Hercules drive it on? Who knows? So someone was asking about the Hercules tools the other day. What I found is the bit driver is just as good as the Milwaukee in my opinion. No difference. I don't miss my Milwaukee one. Uh, angle grinders are just as good as the Milwaukee ones. Honestly, like if you got a five amp hour battery, they they feel the exact same. Drills on the other hand, if a Milwaukee is a 10, this is about a 7.5 to eight. I do see a power difference. I'm most likely gonna switch back to my fuels, um, but I did sell my grinders. I was that confident in Hercules. I didn't have a bit driver because I modified mine with the 3 8 anvil or half inch anvil a long time ago. Um, but I can tell you these things are super strong. You'll actually break these adapters if you're not careful. But that's my thought so far. See if that's pulling it in and ooh, that is real nice. That bit driver's strong. Okay, now we put our other studs in. Through the back like that. I'm putting my lug nuts on there backwards to draw it in. And now we just gotta worry if the disc is gonna clear. Okay. So there we have it. So now we have, so if we ever want to change the rotor, which you shouldn't be wearing out rotors that often, especially thick boy 27s like that. We just knock those studs out and go to Napa, buy a $20 rotor. I think they're 30 at Napa, but they're 20 on Amazon. And we put a new one on and bibbity boppity boop, bobby jump. I gotta remind myself when sitting on this wheel that it has uh, spots <laughs> on it. <laughs> Poke my speaker. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, I think I actually measured it before to make sure it's real clear. We don't have any grease in the wheel bearings yet. So don't yell at me. It's a little tight. Is that too tight? That's sick. That's sick. Sick. Okay, now we got these wheel blue break calipers so you can get these on amazon or you can get them at protolightracing.com uh, and he carries pads and everything they're super nice because you just pop that clip out and slide it out and you can slide the pads right out from the top so if you're doing brakes you literally can do brakes without taking off any bolts other than your wheel um taking off your wheel but look at that so now we literally got to build a flat mount it's gonna be so easy. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Off of that, so I'm gonna run on CAD real quick, and we're going to 
build a little standoff buoy. I feel like we need a half hour for the day or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have front brakes done in no time. Well, let's pump our brakes. We still got plenty of time for something to fill. Uh, and then when we do this, we also want to get, so this is dual piston. And if you notice, it has bleeders on all four corners. So it doesn't matter which way you orientate this. It doesn't matter. You're going to have a bleeder up always. And the inlet, I have put a eighth inch to um, 3 a.m. And then I have stainless 3 a.m. lines that run from my A-arms to a center bulkhead. And this is a three port, just with a bolt hole in it, a three port uh, eighth inch MPT. And then I put on each side 3 a.m. Right here will be a brake line, 3, 8, 3 16 brake line inlet. So this, I'll drill a hole and weld in a bulkhead for this. So the bolt right there, dead center of the chassis. The hard line will run up. Well, it'll tee off of this to go to the back. Don't you dare, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Hope you guys are enjoying this. <laughs> I love to watch No, you. either whatever. Uh, what would be nice is if I had a master cylinder to hook up to it, just to pump it so it holds itself in place. Because the only thing I want to get it as centered as possible on this, like, I don't want it floating. So what I did was I made this about a half inch longer than what I designed it in CAD. Uh, like we cut it and it wasn't correct. It was the originals. So I made it a little bit longer and now they clear perfectly. So these are dual piston calipers. They have a piston on each side that push in. So they can account for a little bit of offness. Like if your caliper's a 16th or an eighth inch to one side, it's fine. So what I'm gonna do is take this aluminum, slide it in between the rotor and the pad on one side and press it real tight against it and tack weld it a bunch of times. And that'll give me an eighth inch gap on one side, 16th of a gap, 16th of an inch gap on the other, which should be okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, I probably won't listen. So I'm just setting this in wherever I think it looks good at and just pushing it against it. Bingo. Like I said, we have an eighth inch on this side, a sixteenth on this side, so we're all good. What I'm going to do is pull the caliper off, pull the rotor off, and fully weld these because they're they're where I need it. You can see it. There's no scraping. No pressure in this, of course. So now we can replicate this on the other side. We already got the bracket made in the caliper. Gotta put our rotor on the hub and then front brakes will be done and we can start running the lines. Cool. Okay, brake lines are done for the front-ish. Now we just need to make a hard line that goes from here up to the master cylinder. If you ever work on brake lines, this tool is the best investment you'll ever buy. And the brake line straightening tool. 
I bought that puppy too. And I'm just, oop, that's a lot of dab. That's a lot of dab will do you. But you do want to grease these puppies. So, you literally select option one to flush it in this. Once it's flush, you tighten down this, which we have. Now we switch to 3 16 operation one. Miss Redbeard's right in my way. So we got operation one selected. This is stainless, so there we go. Operation one. Operation two, 3 16 And that's it. We have a perfect 45 degree double flare. Look at that. It is crazy how good that is. So one big thing I've learned with brake lines, you always either use a little bit of like grease for oil, like lube on it, or use brake fluid. Now I always normally file these, but this Eastwood does so good, you normally don't have to. And with double flares, when you first cinch it down, you like tighten it, back it back out, and wet it when you're putting it all together with brake fluid. Uh, you tighten it down, break it back loose, tighten it down. You can do that a few times to seat that double flare into the brass double flare to make sure you don't have a leak. On the supercharger buggy when we did it, we had a leak. We just backed it off and tightened it right back down and it fixed it. So this is stainless line, so it's a little stouter. Like this will do stainless, I'm assuming. Uh, but stainless lines are much nicer. So we don't need this bin. This was just a test I did earlier. So now I'll do a 90 degree bin in this side that matches the length of this one. And then we can figure out the length and cut it to length to reach our little bulkhead. So we'll do that next. It's real nice, a little longer than I wanted it, but. Oh, and guess what? For all the people that do brakes, I did put my, my nut on. Cause that would have been a disaster if I didn't. So it's a little longer than I wanted it. It's about time it's just real close to the steering arm. That's a shame. So what I think I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to cut this off. I knew I knew it was a mistake using that one. That's what I don't like about those brake line benders is they they make too long of a 90. You have to do the flare before with that flare tool. You have to do it before you do the 90 uh, because like that's how long I need the line 90 because I test bent it and that's how long it ended up with that. That's the shortest I could do with that. All right, so now that we have the front brakes all done up, I'm waiting on, I don't have any 3 8 uh, thick plate and I need a 3 8 thick rear rotor. And when we built the rear end, I actually put a spacer in the suspension to space out the CV joint for the thickness of the rotor. So I can't mount the rear caliper, but it's gonna be extremely quick and easy and I'm not gonna run my rear brake line just yet because I don't know where exactly my caliper is gonna be. So brakes for now are done until that, uh, that rotor's getting cut next week because one of my buddies who does powder coat and sandblast keeps three eighths, half inch and all that. There's no point in me buying it. He does me amazing deals. So I don't wanna pull material off the plasma table to put a big heavy piece of three eighths to cut one rotor. So. He's gonna get that done for me. And uh, we got the gas tank mounted. I had to weld in some uh, thread inserts in the frame and that's all done. Now I need to take off the radiator and we got to put a 45 degree bin on this cap.
I got back a jibbly hands in there. Look at that long neck son of a gun. Boom. Okay, I don't have my my nuts. Really do like this radiator setup. It's real nice. Really nice. Got the fill neck a little longer than you need it, but uh, it's all right. I like it. Kind of. An overflow. Woo, doggy. That's real nice. So we have everything uh, buttoned up for today's video. You know when you finish something and you look at it and you're like, that's dumb. I don't know why in the world I left this freaking long neck draft style um, feel neck on this. I was actually supposed to cut it shorter when I got on the fab table. Completely forgot. So what do you guys think? Should I cut it off uh, off camera and shorten it or do you think it's fine leaving it like that? It does look a little dumb. I don't know why. It was just a brain fart, I guess. But uh, we got the coolant lines run. Uh, the only thing we have to do is there was a Y on the engine block that wired off to the dual radiators that was on the bike. We don't need that anymore, so I need to cap one side of that off to finish out the cooling system. And in the next video, we're basically going to tackle the clutch cable, uh, the throttle cable. We're going to finish the rear brakes real quick because we're waiting on that rotor to come in and oil lines. If anybody knows on these YZ450s, which side of the engine is the output and which side is the return for the oil, let me know. I'm going to call Lansdowne Family Racing. He messes with these, you know, ATVs and dirt bikes is what he does. Uh, so I need to know because one needs to return to the top of the tank, one needs to suck from the bottom of the tank. So we need to know that so we can get our oil lines. And I have something pretty cool I'm going to do with the factory oil lines on this engine. Because this is a dry sump engine, it houses all the oil in an oil tank, and that's why we built the oil tank. But you can get away with using go-kart brakes on something like this. The only reason we did the wheel wood calipers because we got almost 60 horsepower in this engine we want to make sure we have the best brakes that we possibly can but the go power sports 150 style brakes they do really well on most builds like if you got a 440 or something you're going to be able to get by with those just put bigger rotors on them i don't know why the chinese decided on the 150s to put five inch rotors but um we have a file that we can cut some eight inch rotors for them that bolt right on the go power sports hubs for 150s like we use on gravy bones and other builds like that. So you don't have to spend this kind of money to get brakes. You can get by with some Go Power Sports stuff that works actually really good and we'll link that down below. We got our shocks, our steering set up, link down below, Go Power Sports uh, supported this build so we can make an affordable cross cart. Uh, you don't have to have 15 inches of wheel travel to have fun. This thing's gonna be a blast and we use really budget stuff on it. 
uh, and that was the purpose of this build. So massive shout out to Go Power Sports. Everything's linked down below. And also a massive shout out to Centurial Tools. Uh, back when we started this, they funded this whole project, sent us the dirt bike and help buy stuff like the wheels and tires. So massive shout out to them. Make sure to check out their links in the video description where you can find the tools that help you notch tube faster. Especially if you're a beginner in notching tube, the uh, Centurial tools makes life way easier. Like I have to teach myself an old dog new tricks because I taught myself to notch tube before I got their stuff. Uh, but Centurial really, if you can train yourself on those tools, you'll be way more efficient on notching tube and you'll have way less waste. I promise you that. So. Make sure to check out all the links, support your boy, and support the build. Uh, next video, we'll be finishing everything up. So it should be two more videos when we'll be riding this thing finally. And then we can get on the SEMA build. That's next on the chopping block. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, we love you, and God loves you. And we'll see you on the next one. God bless.